The Lesser Devil, a novel of the Keening Chronicles. Written and read by Tia M. Grubb. Chapter 1. 3 a.m. Wednesday. 18 days until solstice. I awoke sitting up, my mind and body on knife's edge. The moonlight broke through the blinds at harsh angles that made even the harmless and the ordinary seem cruel and otherworldly. I had the childlike dread that if my feet touched the floor, the creature under the bed would pull me under to my grisly death, and I would never be seen again. My eyes darted around the room, focusing on the slightly ajar closet door, which blocked the moonlight from illuminating its interior. The small space seemed to have endless steps where anything might live or be waiting. Both of my black cats simply looked at me, stretched, and went back to sleep. Their soft purrs reassured me that everything was okay. I laid my head down on my damp pillow, pulled my covers tight, and enjoyed my bed companion's warm small bodies next to me. Every time I would begin to drift off, I would jerk awake as a new sense of alarm would wash over me. I would imagine someone in the night shadows watching, taunting me. I finally consoled myself with the thought that if there was anything in this room, my cats, Morty and Grace, would be the first to know. I started to relax and let myself begin to drift into a desperate sleep. Behind my eyelids I would see fearsome flashes of something reaching for me, pale, long arms slowly stretching up from the depths of the shadows, monsters wanting to drag me into their gaping jaws. I would heavily open my eyes to the room and try to shake off the feeling and the memory of the vision. I would instead think of all I had to do tomorrow. I need to work on my book, pick up cat food, some groceries, milk, eggs, bread... My thoughts became fuzzy as I began to give in to the Sandman's call. Click. My eyes jerked wide open. Neither of my cats had moved from my side. Screech, screech. My eyes once again darted across the room. The space seemed darker than before. The light from the outside seemed unable to dispel the inky night. Screech, screech. The sound was coming from my now-closed closet. I began to lose my breath. My mouth went dry. I was now fully awake, every sense I had on full alert. But I played still. Scritch, scritch. The closet. Maybe it's my belt hanging on the back of the door and the air vent. Scritch, scritch. I poked at the cats, wondering why they didn't hear it or seemed to want to check it out. Scritch, scritch. Okay, Lydia, get a grip. I studied my nerves and grabbed a heavy flashlight that I always kept beside my bed just in case of an Alabama thunderstorm had knocked out the power. Scritch, 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 scritch. It was becoming louder and more impatient. I lifted Morty and put him beside his sister. I was about to put my feet on the floor when a sharp jolt of panic ran through me as I remembered that the boogeyman was waiting underneath. My limbs began to weaken. I placed one foot down on the semi-shag carpet, keeping most of my weight on the bed so I could get away quickly if I needed to. Nothing. Scritch, 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 scritch. Don't be silly. Nothing's going to grab me from under the bed. The boogeyman is waiting for me in my closet. I glared at my cats, who did not care that my heart was in my throat. Spoiled-ass cats. This is probably a mouse and it's your job to protect me from said mouse. They did not budge. Scritch, 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 scritch. I gritted my teeth. Damn it, I'm coming. I screwed up my courage and made my way to the closet. Scritch, 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 scritch. I clicked on my plastic flashlight. It gave a reluctant yellow glow that barely did anything but cast more twisted demonic shapes across the walls. The scratching sound had stopped. I thought about trying going back to bed and pretending this never happened. This time a long, drawn-out screech went across the back of my closet door. My entire body began to tremble. I held my flashlight firmly in my left hand and reached with my right. As I stretched for the doorknob, I could barely lift my arm for the weight of dread bearing down on it. I turned the old scuffed brass knob slowly. I heard the click of it releasing its hold on the door frame. I had to remind myself to breathe. I could hear my heart pounding in my ears. Fuck it. I jerked open the door, 
Four glowing eyes jumped at me, and I let out a scream. The dim light revealed them to be nothing more than Morty and Grace. I slid down the door as the adrenaline flushed from my body. I nervously chuckled with embarrassment. Wait, something's not right. No, you were in bed with me, I said as if trying to convince them. A cold prickle went across my flesh like icy cobwebs. The room grew cold and dark, and darker still. I stood up and turned around to face my bed, where I thought my cat had laid sleeping. Two low growls and hisses came from my feline friends at my feet, as we all stood in shock at what we saw before us. A great black hole opened over my bed, the nothing was all-consuming. No light but a purple hue swirling into the void. Great claws reached for me and grabbed at my skin. Both my furry friends were puffed up, arched, showing their claws and fangs while their backs were to the wall. I tried to pull off the ravenous talons, but my hands slipped through frigid, viscous air. Shadows danced all around me. I could hear voices calling out. Picture frames lurched from the walls as shade creatures scurried furiously behind them. Raspy and alien voices broke through the night. She's dangerous. She's dangerous. We must kill her. We must kill dangerous. Her. Must take, her. Her. Take, her. take her. Take her. Take her. I dropped to the floor with my knees up, my face down, and my hands over my ears. I tried to resist the pull of the dark portal that summoned me. It was not my flesh that was being ripped away, but my very soul. Only the silver cord between my spiritual and physical self kept me from being lost into the nothingness. Its threads began to fray and snap one by one. I tried to crawl to the bedroom door, but my astral arms and legs were no longer connected to my muscles. I had to focus to connect my will to my flesh and bone. The devil's mad course grew stronger. Come with us. Come with we us. Know we you. know you. You cannot hide. You cannot She's hide. dangerous. Cannot Take her. Dangerous. Take her. No, no, let me go. I screamed. I continued to try to crawl away as my soul was falling into oblivion. Help! The talons of the abyss morphed into a great undulating tooth tentacle that began to crush me. With every exhale, the coil compressed and crushed my lungs inch by inch. Suddenly, a strange calm filled me. It was like a great eye of a hurricane, beautiful peace in the middle of catastrophic chaos. I knew that I could defeat this, the creatures from the nothing. The calm turned into a warm fire within me and it reflected from inside the void. A small golden globe began to emerge within the portal. The bright flame grew steady and ever larger. The shades began to scatter. The giant squirming tentacle held firm, my spirit's silver cord on its last thread. My soul would be lost forever, but still calmness remained. I just knew I was not defeated. And at that moment the torchlight exploded into the room. The tentacle that held me so tightly putrefied into a sticky slurry. My soul and body crashed together with such force, I awoke sitting up in my bed, feeling the stark sensation of deja vu. Once again, the moonlight broke through the blinds at harsh angles that made even the harmless and the ordinary seem cruel and otherworldly. I was still afraid, but not helpless. End Chapter One This is Tia Grubb, author of The Lesser Devil, a book of the Keening Chronicles. It is a story of witches, demons, monsters, and men, each seduced by the darkness within and throughout. Deals made and blood shed, the world will never be the same. Not afraid of the dark? Check out my book, The Lesser Devil, on Amazon, available on Kindle and print on demand. Still curious? Find me on Facebook, Tia M. Grubb, and on YouTube, The Lesser Devil Book Trailer.